major updates to Halo Infinite playlists, challenges, and performance-based XP. We finally get a trailer for the live-action Halo TV show. 343 files a trademark for a potential new game. The number one Halo team caught cheating. And amazing grunt lines and Easter eggs you have to see to believe. And a whole lot more, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again. Today is another Last Week in Halo episode. With these episodes every Monday morning, I like to recap everything that happened in the previous week of Halos because I know not everyone can catch up with the news as soon as it happens, which we do do on this channel here, guys. But we all live busy lives, especially around the holiday season. So I like to premiere these episodes every Monday morning. I'm live in chat answering questions and interacting with you guys as well. So make sure you subscribe to catch when the next episode goes live next Monday. We have a lot of stuff to go into, so let's just jump right into it, guys. So let's get into the content so i actually haven't watched the trailer guys so this is gonna be a live watch for the first time for me as well so let's experience this together so paramount plus is gonna be the live streaming service that this show is gonna be on which is gonna be amazing okay here we go i don't oh oh that piano tone is like so familiar yet it sounds different i don't know where this location is at all okay yeah i haven't seen any of this stuff before we're lost in the dark that must probably be a Karen, uh, young ha ha Karen Hauntinger name or something like that. He's gonna be like a sidekick of Master Chief. Give people hope. That's another one of the new Spartans coming into this show as well. And I will always be with you. I wonder who this voiceover is. Dude, I this looks this. good. Dude, that looks like Halo. That looks kind of like a little Halo 4 influence with those, some of those helmets. Oh, Master game. Chief! <laughs> it looks so good! <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. New series streaming 2022 on Paramount Plus. Uh, early 2022 is when we will see this. So just kind of a quick reminder of the Halo TV show, guys. It's not lore accurate, which is very standard when it comes to TV show and movie adaptations of original source material. It said coming in 2022. We do know that it is going to be early 2022. My assumption would be sometime probably along March or something like that. Definitely not in January. Uh, just because January is kind of where like the media's trash kind of gets released during January so it's a really slow month during like especially for cinema TV shows and things like that of course as soon as we get an actual release date I'll share it with you guys here on the channel released alongside with the campaign on December 8th it was Halo Infinite Memory Agent this is like a radio drama but Halo themed and I can listen to the first episode each episode is about 10-ish minutes long definitely worth a listen guys the basic premise is that the main character's memory resets after a certain amount of time so they try to solve the mystery and issues that they have to deal with before the memory reset. Next, we had a somewhat unexpected crossover with Minecraft and Halo, where you can have your favorite Halo Infinite characters now in Minecraft. This is a fun mashup pack, so you definitely want to check it out. The characters we can see are Jega Redumni, Eshiram, Master Chief, obviously, the pilot, and looks like Render Agrina from the multiplayer. Next, we're talking about this trademark that 343 just filed for, and it's quite interesting how it definitely ties into what happened in Halo Infinite and this either could be an expansion DLC thing or a completely different game. As you can see, Halo The Endless has been trademarked, which if you play it through Halo Infinite's campaign, you'll definitely know that The Endless is the name of the species of the Harbinger, which throughout the campaign are heavily alluded to returning within the story of Halo Infinite. This could potentially have ties to leaks that we've covered on the channel previously because Xbox insider Jez Corden talked about some information about how 343 is working on a non-Halo Infinite Halo game, and this is what he had to say about it. We've talked about this before, and I think you've said this in other places, but you do expect 343 to make another game that's not Halo Infinite, right? Yeah, yeah, they are working on another project that isn't Halo Infinite. I know that much. Okay. And remember, Jez Corden was the guy who was saying on November 15th for the Xbox anniversary show that you're going to want to watch it if you're a Halo fan, which we had the multiplayer release that day. So Jez seems to have an ear to the ground when it comes to Microsoft developments. Could Halo The Endless be a completely different game or could it be an expansion to the campaign? We don't really know for sure. Obviously, once the details get concrete, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. 
Now I'm sure you're all familiar, the Halo Infinite's campaign was released last week and I played it and it's absolutely amazing. I'm currently on my second playthrough where I'm just going through all the side missions and having a ton of fun exploring and just kind of going at my own pace. And going at my own pace, I've definitely come across a few things and so has the community. So I wanted to share some awesome Easter eggs that have been found throughout the community that I think a lot of you are going to really want to watch. One of the first Easter eggs is an audio log called Rubicon Protocol, which is named right after the book that's coming out here, I believe in March, that's placed within like that six month period that we don't know much about for Halo Infinite. A player points out something very interesting and the actual author of the book replies going, hmm, very interesting indeed. So if you want your first look most likely into the book Rubicon Protocol, Take a listen to the audio log. There is a tank turret gun that you can pick up by jumping on top of this pillar right here. Pick that up and you can just go to town on whatever you want. You basically can carry this as a secondary weapon. Uh, but once you drop it, it's gone for good. I haven't seen people run around with this like in any cutscenes. if it shows up in that. If it does, please link me because I want to see if that actually happens. I've had a chance to play around with this. It's really fun. Again, just really cool explosion stuff. I dropped it because that's not like the true experience I wanted to play for at least my first like real playthrough of the game. So it's a fun little Easter egg for you, but there's a ton of other Easter eggs within the same location. In this first section here as well, if you go around the map, there are three different buttons that you need to press. Once you press all three buttons, Buttons, an airstrike gets called in and that ending location as you can see it does cause some havoc it does destroy the phantom as well which is also pretty dang cool and there are fun little fireworks little easter egg for you all an easter egg i found personally uh i can't know if i really can take credit as being the first person to find it probably not but if you jump to the back of the map here one there's a spartan core for you to grab which is really awesome the second cool thing is that there is an arcade room in the very back of the map here so if you just grapple your way up to the back right here and you'll find a room with an arcade machine right in there playing some amazingly translated halo infinite music to like 8-bit chip tune cast kind of sound Really awesome stuff. Now, I'm sure many of you know about the Craig Rock Show on top of the tower, but have you seen the Craig Rock? Which you can see right here is a rock formation definitely looking like our good old boy, Craig. I believe this is that Fob Foxtrot, if I'm not mistaken, kind of towards the middle section of the game. Definitely an awesome Easter egg. This one I found kind of funny where if you don't really bother to look at the light, which you're kind of directed to, the pilot gets a little impatient with you, which I find kind of hilarious he just kind of hints at him like hey chief it's like right over there just like look to your left like he's looking kind of disappointed like hey how is he not doing this like it's right there man like just look over to the left it's, that's all you gotta do right there throughout the world of zeta halo there are these little plushies that you can find throughout the whole thing here is a master chief plushie an arbiter plushie i was able to find a pilot plushie and i've seen a few more out there in the open world guys go explore you'll find some cool things like that Within Chacklock's Tower, you can find this little Mr. Meeseeks box, which is an awesome reference to Rick and Morty, which if you guys haven't seen the first two seasons, it's a must watch. The map Blood Gulch can actually be found in here as well. This is one of the bases that you have to take over. If you look at one of the locations that they're operating or at least analyzing, you can see this is definitely Blood Gulch. You have the two bases here, another base here, that windy cove area similar kind of terrain you can kind of make out a path which is very similar to blood gulch as well so this is definitely blood gulch in halo infinite not the way i imagined it but it's still pretty awesome and we do all love the halo 3 rat right of course we do well this person decided to go a little exploring around the silexes and ended up finding a silex of the halo 3 rat yes the halo 3 rat has a silex that's amazing but one of the greatest, and I mean greatest Easter eggs within the entirety of this map, you definitely need to watch, guys. Uh, it's one of a kind. You need to crawl through this little tiny section. And once you do that, you find, that's right, a gigantic sandwich with frozen grunts worshiping the giant sandwich. <laughs> oh, it's such a awesome little easter egg i totally did not expect to see something like this but i'm so glad that this is in this is what an extra year of polish does guys you get giant sandwiches next we have some competitive halo news and this week was definitely a week full of drama as well as championships as well where it looks like someone from the sentinels team was caught 
cheating in a way, basically. Basically what has happened was that in the last tournament, a lot of teams were complaining that they were having issues connecting with the Sentinels team and the Sentinel team alone. It actually caused some delays in the last tournament that really slowed things down and kind of made HCS, at least the live stream itself, not look that great. Looking more into it, it looks like a member from Sentinels Royal 2 might have been what's called geo filtering, which basically makes it so you can cancel out servers that you won't connect to. So you can only connect to servers that you want to actually connect to and not let the game tell you where you get to go. Halo Pro Snipe Down put up actually a really great video kind of breaking it all down and kind of showing it in simple terms why there were so many issues and a lot of inconsistencies. Essentially in the video he points out where last week Sentinels were matching against these same exact teams and getting about 60 ping where the next week, uh, last week that we had, the same teams that they were matching against, they were getting a different server connection and those were getting kind of inconsistent connections in the first place. So the player locations didn't change, the game time didn't change, but the servers did? That doesn't really line up properly. And oddly enough, after this information started getting around, Royal2 deleted or at least removed or privated all of his VODs on his Twitch channel. So with these inconsistencies lining up, not in favor of Royal2 specifically, he's actually been banned from competitive Halo until January of 2022. Essentially, kicking him out of Raleigh because this falls under like cheating and hacking because you're geo filtering, giving yourself a better ping, which gives you a clear advantage, especially in online matches. This also affected the team of Sentinels where they have lost all their placement in pool play, which they were the number one team in competitive Halo. So that's a huge hit guys for them. Where they're down one player that's just been on their team since Halo 5 Optic days. And now they actually lost all their placements. They get, the rest of the team could still play. They just need a fourth now. I do want to state that HCS didn't find concrete, clearly obvious evidence that this was what was happening, but there were just too many inconsistencies lining up against Royal 2 specifically. And so it sounds like with the discussions within many of the players and competitors, as well as the team at HCS, they decided to ban Royal 2 until January of 2022. It just seems so odd that he would do that. If, it, if he did, it's still not even true if he actually did do that. What I think what might have happened since he lives up in Northern Canada, like kind of up more North, that would be kind of difficult to find a good ping. For matchmaking ranked games, what I think he might have done is actually done a geo filter on his router to where he actually get good ping service, which would totally make sense. Honestly, I would do the same thing for matchmaking, but maybe he forgot to like turn off or reset his router for the geo filter, to where it, then it actually gave his team the advantage when it comes to ping and connections, because like I said, he matched against the exact same players in the exact same locations, but then the pings and servers were completely different for whatever reason. This is a developing story and guys, I will definitely let you know as soon as we get more concrete information. All right, now let's get into the juicy stuff, the Halo Infinite news and updates. We're gonna be talking about a known issue with the campaign and its unlocks. A gaming journalist talks about how Halo Infinite's development almost was like Anthem, which was scary to hear. And we have an awesome playlist update coming around this week. The big issue with campaign right now is that a lot of people are not getting their campaign unlocks for their multiplayer experience. The main issues have been if you jump into a quick resume on the Xbox, it might not really save all the actions that you do, or if you get kicked offline, which I've kind of been experiencing this as well, being kicked offline with joining into a campaign session that sometimes when you go to do an unlock locker that it doesn't actually unlock in the game. 343 did say that they have a fix in the work for this right now, but at the moment they say, if you're gonna unlock anything, do a hard reset, do not do quick resume. But if you're gonna play through anyways and get these unlocks that they will be retroactively activated as well. So if you guys don't wanna bother with that whole thing, you just go through unlocks no matter what, just wait for the patch and things will unlock for you. 343 developer talks about in this article that they're currently working on an ability to do level selection, which you guys know right now, I'm sure many of you do, that you cannot actually select what missions you want to play. So if you're a completionist and want to replay a mission, you kind of have to restart the whole campaign, which is a bit of a drag. 343 associate creative director Paul Crocker goes into this saying, the main reason is because being a more open game and a non-linear game, it became incredibly challenging 
It's not that it doesn't work, it's just that it's not finished. But saying that like level selection is part of all the stuff that they're currently working on at the moment, so it is being developed right now. But it does say that there is no date to be announced. My hope is that it comes with the season two update in May. I doubt it as if he did have a release time frame, they probably would have said it because that seems to be kind of a hard set amount of content that's gonna be coming in May with campaign co-op, which is gonna be absolutely amazing. So I expect this to be kind of an issue to be dragging on for quite a few months. Of course, it's a developing story. I'll let you guys know on the channel as soon as we get some good information about it. Well-renowned gaming journalist Jason Schreier talks about how two and a half years ago, a number of 343 staff passed around our big Anthem article, lamenting that much of it could be also applied to Halo Infinite. Someone pointed out at the end of that kind of development hell, you can wind up like Anthem or you can wind up like God of War. I think him utilizing the word development hell doesn't really match up exactly with what I feel like happened at 343. Certainly there's a lot of issues. Certainly there are a lot of ups and downs when it comes to development of this game, but every game has its ups and its downs, its high peaks, its low peaks, its crunch times, its slow times as well. But it sounds like 343 was able to just kind of get things together as they wanted it to make a really good game. Sometimes that just doesn't happen and you get a game like Anthem them, but it looks like we did get a game like God of War where it ended up being like really good content. Schreier continues on saying that 343's toolset Faber was so difficult to use they spent months considering to a switch to Unreal, which they didn't. The game was delayed multiple times actually and one early plan was to release the multiplayer in 2019 and then the campaign in 2020. Which that tool set information does actually sound to line up a lot from what I've heard from like Glassdoor and various other 343 employees when they go online talking about their experience that working at 343 is great, the content that they're working on is amazing, but the tool set could use a lot of love. And with that multiplayer slash campaign release time frame differences, like earlier I would have probably called you a madman because I would have thought no way they would release multiplayer and campaign separately, but then they actually did that. So now when I hear this in this context, that actually kind of makes a lot of sense. Of course, that extra year of development really helped out Halo Infinite. You can clearly see it did. But kind of touching back onto the whole development hell thing, I think it's more just tough times with development. Every people are, like I've read so many Glass Store reviews and stuff like that about working at 343, saying that like their experience is fun. We've had people who have left 343 and actually made full-on videos discussing why they left, saying they had just different opportunities out there or their contracts ran out. And the whole like crunch period is not really there. I mean, it's certainly there, but it's more like people want to put in that extra effort to get the stuff that they have created for Halo Infinite to get it actually into the game. Rather than Microsoft whipping their employees to work like 60 hour plus work weeks just to get a game done. I mean, ultimately you're both working long hours and long weeks, but one is because you have to, one, the other one is because you want to. And for the Halo Infinite news guys, I know you all couldn't wait to hear playlist, challenges, XP gain updates, all coming for Halo Infinite, guys. Oh my gosh, it's super exciting. Sketch recently went to the battlefield known as the Halo subreddit and said this, that they have officially locked and loaded for the update this week, saying that the four playlists of Slayer, Fiesta, Free For All, and Tactical Slayer, aka SWAT, all coming on December 14th. Sketch also clarifying that it's gonna be a vanilla basic Slayer playlist. 343 still does intend to add more variations within the Slayer playlist later on in January, but for now, this is gonna be just a basic Slayer playlist. There are also adjustments to challenges, including removing some particularly frustrating mode specific ones, reducing requirements for others, making the weekly ultimate challenge less intense because it's so difficult already just to get there in the first place. Also adding in brand new challenges that are specific to these new playlists because obviously that's going to need a complete rework if you're adding in these playlists. But a really interesting thing I know a lot of people in the community have been asking for saying a new challenge category based on accumulating player score, a small initial step towards performance-based XP. Which I'm like, praise! Thank you, 343, for finally giving us these playlists that I know a lot of people have been clamoring for. It was weird reading this because, like, sketch me, it sound like, oh, you know, it's only vanilla Slayer, guys. You know, we really want to do more with it, but yeah, you know, we're just gonna give you a basic Slayer playlist. And I'm sure, like, 99% of players are like, yeah, that's all I ever want. Just Slayer. That's all I need. I don't need, like, crazy variants or something like that with it. I just want basic Slayer, which 
I don't know why that had to be like a mixed in playlist. I mean, I understand like it would improve the health of other playlists if Slayer gets mixed in with all these objective modes like we have currently with Quick Play, but Slayer is your most popular mode. It's always gonna be your most popular mode. There's gonna be a lot of people out there who just want to play Slayer. So you kind of have to give it to them. And I'm not totally sure how I feel about performance-based XP because experience points are tied to progression and progression is tied to payment. So are you gonna let your higher skilled players progress through the battle pass faster than your lower skilled players? I would feel like if you're a lower skilled player, you just kind of feel down upon yourself like, oh man, I'm just not good enough to progress through this grindy battle pass in a decent amount of time. It feels kind of bad where all these high skilled players are like wearing all this cool stuff and you're like, I have gray armor. This is boring. Obviously, 343 has the data to talk about this. As soon as we get some more information about this performance-based XP system, I'll let you guys know on the channel. I mean, certainly expect a video on November 14th talking about these plays and all these update changes coming to Halo Infinite. Now we've been on this wild ride, guys, of Halo news and information. So I want to leave you guys off on a light note. These are some of the best line, grunt lines I have ever heard in a Halo game. And I really like, I felt compelled that I need to share these lines with you guys. There's one in particular I've listened to like 15 times over, just laughing my ass off. This one we have a grunt talking some mad trash about human names because we all know how amazing grunt names are. Attention humans. I was just going back through some dog tags plucked off your dead comrades. And I gotta say, human names are just the dumbest sounding names in the galaxy. Easterling, McDonough, Lindy, Crocker, where'd you come up with that stupid crap? Go back in time and tell your parents to try harder. What you have to say, the funny thing about this is that Easterling, McDonough, Lindy, and Crocker are all developers and members who work at 343. So it's funny how their names got mixed in with that as well. It's just, grunts are amazing in Halo Infinite, man. I mean, come on, save a tower, save a grunt. I'm, I would be compelled to do that. Sadly enough, our grunt friend did not get dibs on that helmet. Now this last one, guys, I am absolutely obsessed with this one. I've listened to this like multiple times over. It's still just as funny as the first time as it is like the 20th time I listened to this. This is just, absolutely hilarious this is why the halo infinite grunts are the best grunts to be ever placed in a halo game Pardon? you there y you still mad oh, no! i can't get over that one dude i've listened to that so many times over just like yell at the it's like that perfectly timed scream is just absolutely hilarious oh, no! and just like that wary little girl like you 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 still there i absolutely love it so if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got a link to all my halo infinite news and informational videos thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out